Hey everyone, this time I am going to paint these four photo studies and explain to you all my process using the new RGBA brushes in Krita 5. I really like these brushes and I had a lot of fun using them. Krita already had RGB brushes but this new version of Krita now has an even more powerful engine and the possibility of creating wet RGB brushes, meaning they can mix the color on the go. So let's begin with this painting. Here I start by sketching some basic proportions and then I add the colors to the background and the hair. I'm trying to work in the same way that I would with traditional media, so I am painting in one layer and using a background that resembles the texture of a canvas. In general, values are what make a painting realistic and appealing, so they must be your number one priority. Dark values are easier to get and they make it easier to discern the brighter ones, so in general you can start with dark values, especially if they are covering big areas. The first thing I noticed about these brushes was the feeling of them. They feel really nice, uh, they are very creamy and the way the color mix looks and feel very real and organic. They are awesome. I also like the texture. When you work with traditional media you don't have to worry about that because texture and what it's so called brushwork comes naturally. But in digital media is something to have in mind. There is always the risk of making something too smooth to the point it looks artificial and well, digital. But that texture in an RGBA brush has your back with that. I keep adjusting values and putting some colors here and there. The things I am having in mind all the time are again values, but also color temperature. And here is actually one of the best pieces of advice I have ever heard regarding color in painting. To focus more on the temperature of the color rather than in the color itself, meaning the hue of the color. The colors are defined by the light. If the light is cold, the colors of all the elements in the scene will be colder, and vice versa with warm colors. That's one of the reasons it is useful to use a reduced palette sometimes, or a gamut mask. It has to do with connecting the colors, giving them that harmony that puts together the whole painting. In this case, I am not using a reduced palette, nor a gamut mask. But I know that this portrait has a cold light, so I am consciously trying to use colder colors. What I do is to try to determine how dark the color is, and then if that color I am seeing looks like a red, for example, I pick a red color but I shift it towards the colds. All colors have a cold and a warm side. If you are working with oils, a cold yellow could be a lemon yellow, and a cadmium yellow would be warmer. Prussian blue is cold and phthalo blue is warm. You know, you get the idea. When you choose a color for a particular area, it may not be the exact same color as the reference, but giving that connection to the color in terms of temperature, and provided you have the correct values, always gives a very good result. Judging values can be quite tricky, especially at the beginning, and that's why I repeat this over and over again, each time getting closer and closer to the real values and the real colors, in a process of continuous adjustment. So again, don't worry that much to pick the exact color straight away, instead think all the time in values and color temperature, in that order of priority. With that, this portrait is finished, so let's begin with the next one. For this one I wanted to paint a city with a more loose approach. I am using a brush for the sky that, as you can see, can create a really nice thick paint effect. This thick paint effect is called impasto. The problem is that I don't want this effect on the sky, it's too distracting. So I am going to soften those brush marks later and blend everything a bit more. You should be careful with impasto because it can really drive your attention. I have seen a lot of paintings that use impasto everywhere or in places that don't really make any sense. As a result, the image became too noisy. I understand why impasto is so popular, I understand why a lot of people like it quite a lot. But remember that in every painting you are always trying to communicate something and you should think of the best way to do it. For example, the important part here is the building, especially the statue, and I'm going to try to use the tools I have to direct your attention to them. So try not to use impasto just because it looks really good. Try to ask yourself first, what do you want to communicate and what is the best way to do it? Sorry for being so annoying with that, but I see this mistake all the time and I don't really like it. Now I am trying to define the areas of light and the areas of shadow in the buildings, because that division is what creates the illusion of having a lot of planes. This building has too many details, so I really have to try and simplify everything. I am taking advantage of the texture of these brushes, I am using the palette knives in the building, and the great thing about them is that they have a variation in color. 
Some of them can paint with a darker color depending on the direction of the brush stroke and one of them can actually put different colors in the same brush stroke. Also they have different kinds of edges. All of that helps me to create that diversity I need to make this appear busier than actually is. This one was difficult to paint, I was outside of my comfort zone for sure. But I like how it turned out at the end, and all of those brush strokes very similar to an Ala Prima painting. I definitely have a lot of fun with these palette knives and try to blend those colors in the sky with that thick paint. We have a portrait again, and here I want to really push these brushes in terms of blending. I choose this beautiful picture precisely because of all of those beautiful colors and soft transitions on the skin. But also for that direct lighting, it's really a beautiful portrait and a good challenge. I start by tracing the face and the areas of the light and shadows just because I can't be bothered really. And after that I add the colors in the same way I did in the previous portrait. Something I want you to notice is that I am not blending straight away, I am putting different colors one next to the other and I am leaving them like that with hard edges between them. This is the way I like to work with real oils because you don't want to overblend and lose that diversity of colors and end up with dull grays, which is especially easy to do with oils. I'm going to blend those edges later, but for now I want to be accurate with my values and colors because for this one I really want to get very close to the reference. Now here is when I start to slowly blend things together, when I have almost all the colors and values figured out. But you have to be careful, one advantage of painting like this is that because you don't blend, it's easier to keep your initial proportions. Whether you draw, grid, transfer or trace the initial proportions, you have to keep them. One mistake I used to make when I was learning was to paint over the initial drawing, the drawing with all the correct proportions I put so much effort into. Losing those marks and ruining the portrait, of course. In the face, there are areas you want to pay more attention to. For example, the lips. I always forget how soft the transition between the lips and the skin around the mouth is. When you pay close attention, it is really soft and it's quite difficult to do sometimes. I did have problems with the mouth here. But remember that everything you need is in your reference, so keep looking at it. I also think it's best to paint everything at once. I, what I mean by that is to try not to completely finish one area before the other and instead try to paint a bit of everything until you have the whole painting well defined in terms of values and colors. Then you can go ahead and render the details. As I said before, the texture of these brushes really helps you with that organic look, but because of the same reason it can make it difficult to get really light or dark values, because within the brush stroke you always have those lines of shadows and reflections. So you have to use pure black and white and press the pencil really hard to get them and you won't get those pure colors even like that. So that's a limiting factor but you can solve it using blending modes or even with some filter layer that increase the contrast. Now I am in the point of adding details and fixing small things here and there. I add the eyelashes and the reflection in the eyes that really give her the appearance of being alive. Then I go for the reflection in the hair and put some more color variety. The hair is also a difficult part for me, I improve it by not thinking too much about it and by trying to simplify all of those shapes and avoiding painting too many details and single strands. Being nearly finished, I wanted to deviate from my reference, but only just a bit, just to give the portrait the look of an oil painting. I left the background with a color that is a bit grayer than in the original, and I tried to make it appear that there is more thick paint in the brighter areas of both the background and the face. I was having so much fun with this that I decided to make a last one. I wanted to just relax and paint something really nice and I came across with this beautiful beautiful picture of a llama with this amazing composition. I like how abstract the background is with those mountains in the distance and, and how the llama is framing the cloud. It's a really really beautiful scene. I love these brushes and I think they are going to be one of my favorite sets to paint, especially portraits. Although I think there is a lot of room for improvement. Not because they are not great already, but because how advanced the new Krita brush engines have become. The oil texture of that thick paint looks great overall, but the only thing is that when you look at it really close, it starts to become strange and dotted, with a pattern of little points instead of the lines the brush strands leave on the paint. 
But that's a very minor problem compared to how great they feel. I can spend hours just mixing colors with these palette knives. And in general, this new version of Krita is fantastic as well. Very fast and with this recording docker that I hope you noticed improves quite a lot your time lapses. I am actually curious about it. Please let me know if you prefer this way of visualization or if you prefer to see the interface of the painting program. You know, with the menu bar, the color selector and the layers and also the cursor of the painting tablet, all of that. I think this one is better, especially because you can read more easily of that bumping camera. Otherwise, you have to make a really, really heavy editing process. Before we finish here, I want to tell you that this video was brought to you by my illustrated children's book, a small collection of stories from my country illustrated by me, available on Amazon Spanish edition only. As always, thank you for watching and until the next time, farewell.